What's up guys, I'm Nico of Camp Crunch and in today's video I want to show you guys a quick tutorial on how to get sort of a faded film look using Adobe Lightroom. Now a lot of people call this faded look the film look simply because it looks maybe like old and it has like a gritty feeling but that faded look is really the result of underexposing film and then having to compensate for that by increasing the exposure of everything. So you compensate for that either in scanning or in processing or something like that, but you're basically increasing the values of everything, which makes your black values like you have here in the corner, you make those basically gray. Now this is a digital image, but I just sort of explain the process of how it's like when you shoot film and you underexpose. You have to overexpose uh, during scanning again to compensate for that. So we're going to start here with the develop module. This is actually where everything happens. And you can do your basic adjustments here uh, first if you want to. I'm just going to sort of what I do normally. And this one will just, this these adjustments will just increase the dynamic range slightly. Because I know that I'm going to blow out some areas a little bit later. So I just want to compensate for that right now. But I'm not going to touch too much from here. You can do other settings like exposure. You can do contrast if you want, but we're going to adjust that in a little bit. So I don't typically do that. Now we're going to go to the tone curves where really all the magic happens. And for those of you that don't know how tone curves works, up here on the right are your highlights and then down here are your shadows on the left. And the tone curve is basically sort of a graphical representation of the tones in your in your image. Now the bottom here, your your darks are down here because they are the lowest, they are the darkest, and then your highlights are the brightest, so they're up here. And people usually use this to adjust contrast of the, an image, which you can. People typically do a slight S curve to increase the contrast or whatever, but you can also use this to get the faded look. What you'll do is you go to RGB, which is the master tone curve. You can also adjust the contrast individually between the different uh, colors, red, green, and blue. But you want to go to the master, and then you can just increase this lowest black level up a little bit until it's sort of gray. Then maybe you can adjust the contrast. But as you can see, when you bring it up a little bit, the dark values, they start to go away. And you can see here on the histogram, there are like no black values at all in this image anymore and that's because we increased the tone uh, curve in that area. We just basically r removed all of the blacks and that's sort of mimicking that film look, that faded film look. I think it looks pretty neat in black and white more than in color. I guess it works in color too but I usually like more vibrant uh, colored images. So that's really basically it with the the faded look, but let's just take this a step forward further and just sort of bring this image closer to a film look. I'm going to mimic sort of um, high ISO film and you can do that by adding some grain, maybe 25 or 30, let's go with 30. So we added grain here and then you can increase the size if you want to however big you want, but I typically leave that at default. You can add a vignette if you want. And that's basically it. So let's just look at the black and white in color version. Now I think with the color we're losing a little bit too much detail. But again it's up to you how you want to use uh, this feature, this tone curve feature. We can bring it down a little bit, which I think looks a lot better. Just that little difference made it a lot better. So that's it guys. That's it for this short video. I hope you guys learned how to use the tone curve and hopefully you can make some images using this uh, tool and technique. I'm Nico of Cam Crunch. If you like this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.